One of Luke and I's favorite things to do whenever we're just feeling like digging into some Halo history in one way or another is definitely to take a look at some cut content that never quite made its way into the final release of a Halo game. And while we've looked at things like cut vehicles in the past, one thing that's always really interested us are the enemy classes that never made their way into the final launch of the game. For whatever reason, these guys were scrapped early on in development, and instead we just got the classes that we know and still kind of love to this day. But which enemy classes almost were, but never actually made their way into the release of a Halo game? Let's take a little bit of a closer look. But first, before we dive into it, we want to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. With internet reliance increasing, there's definitely a big need for you and your data to stay safe while being online. Surfshark can help you do just that. It's literally the best VPN service out there that offers great features and it's really easy to use. Not only will you stay safe when browsing websites, online shopping, or doing anything else on the internet, you can also get around those annoying regional restrictions that a lot of streaming services like Netflix have by simply changing your location with Surfshark. This allows you access to a ton more movies and shows that aren't available in your regular region. Now, there are many ways that you can install Surfshark, whether you want it as a desktop app, a browser add-on, or you can even get it for things like your Fire TV. Right now, there's this awesome deal when you use promo Rocket, or you can click on the link below, where you can get a discount of 83% for your purchase of Surfshark, plus the first three months for free. So for only a couple bucks a month, you can stay safe online and expand your favorite streaming services. And if you're planning on signing up anyways, using our referral link helps us out a little bit too. So jumping into Halo Combat Evolved, there are were a couple of species that didn't quite make it into the release of the game. Now, earlier on in development, it seemed like there was going to be a lot of native creatures that you would interact with in Combat Evolved, like the Morolath, also known as the Blind Wolf, which was a creature designed for Combat Evolved by Marcus Leto. It was this two-legged creature with saber-tooth-like teeth that was supposed to only be able to see with this bug-type thing attached to it, kind of like a parasite. You can actually see a herd of them during the trailer, and apparently players were even able to ride them, which would have been kind of fun, though it did end up getting cut because of issues with the AI. In Halo 2, there's actually a reference to this in the announcements on Terminal, and this idea was briefly brought back again for that cancelled Halo MMO that never ended up actually happening. Even more interestingly enough, that Minecraft crossover thing that happened with Halo that we did a video on not too long ago, as it turns out, the horses are actually retextured versions of the Morolath. And in the 2015 Halo book, Hunters in the Dark, the Morlath were officially introduced into the canon of Halo, but with the new introduction, the design was adjusted a little bit, but it is really cool that these guys finally did make their way into the canon eventually. There was also this species that was called a three-leg. It kind of looks like this three-legged bugger. It's kind of freaky, but it was cut from the final game. It almost seemed like this creature wasn't supposed to actually be something that you fought and would be more of a passive class, more like the MOA in Halo Reach. There's also something called a thorax, which has an interesting design. It was blue and had these yellow features with this big red eye mixed with a short upper body. It likely was another passive class, but the thorn beast on the other hand wasn't really a passive class. It was a big creature that would shoot thorns from its back and just snipe players. There's actually footage from it from the E3 2000 trailer, which was already when Halo was shaping up to be combat evolved, but was cut once again. This idea was resurrected again during Halo Wars development and was considered for the game, but ultimately ended up getting cut as well. But they are mentioned in the book Contact Harvest, so they are canon, which is kind of nice. There's also apparently something called the Doberman Gator, and while not much is known about this Doberman Gator. There is concept art out there that appears on the Collector's Edition DVD that shows this dog-like creature with an alligator head and tail. They also made this species called a Volpard. It's part giraffe, part griffin, part leopard? I don't know what's going on here. It's great. In video games, usually developers try to clear up a memory when you're playing the game through the means of despawning dead enemies, for example. I mean, I always thought it was odd when a corpse would just fade out of existence 
existence, like in GoldenEye 64. At one point, there were plans of incorporating this idea or usage of saving memory space by having an ambient life form come and fly away with corpses, which would have been what the keelbug would have done. And like the name implies, it's an insect and it would have actually been a part of the Covenant too. Obviously, this was way too ambitious for the time and never made it out of the conceptual phase, but it still was a really interesting idea. Now, also, the bleached bone armor coating in Halo Infinite actually mentions the keel bug in its description. So maybe this is a nod to this original cut creature and they're gonna make it canon just like some of the other creatures. There also was this species called a tank beast, which was another deleted Covenant enemy. And while there's not a lot of information about it, apparently these were 11 foot tall and they had three legs with armor on their legs. We can't really see what the head would have looked like, though in one weird way or another, it kind of reminds us of a scarab. So maybe this shape ended up turning into something else like a scarab down the way. Okay, over in Marathon, which was one of Bungie's earlier games, there were these hulks, which were these big meaty creatures where you could figure out where they got their name from. So the shark koi were probably an inspiration or later evolution of this idea. And you can see them in early builds of Halo Combat Evolve, they're actually like double the height of the player. And even though they were cut from Combat Evolve, they were considered once again for Halo 2 during development and actually went as far as having concept art of them actually made. Okay, so before we get into Halo 2, actually I'm gonna have to re-record this because um, I think me and Elijah got things mixed up here. So when I first uh, did some research for this, I found these drone engineers, right? I mean, they're called drone engineers. They look like drones, like uh, the, the buggers, right? And they're like purple and they have the name engineer. So it's likely that they're maybe like giving player shields, but they were part of the Covenant too and they were buggers, I guess. Or they could have just been early forms of the buggers that were purple. But then there's also these actual engineers that people like General Kid have managed to restore and they do actually look like the engineers from Halo 3 ODST, more or less. So since they are able to be restored in this way and there's a full model and stuff and they kind of move around, there's animations, it is safe to assume these were also cut really late in development and they almost made their way in. They just don't have the function of giving players shields, I think. And also they did consider putting them in Halo 2 as well, but it took till Halo 3 ODC to actually get him in. That's all. Back to Elijah. Moving on to Halo 2, there still were quite a few enemy classes that didn't quite make their way into the final release of the game. But when the Flood was first introduced, there were, sure, a couple of different forms, like the little popcorn looking Flood or the little infection forms along the way. But one that was actually cut that was supposed to be in Halo 2 was this Juggernaut form. It was a Flood melee form that had double the height of a player with these long blades and claws and its hands would apparently just whack a player. Now, of course, fans of Halo 2 have discovered the model in the game and the AI can actually be somewhat restored in Halo 2, meaning that these guys were likely cut very late in development. And technically these guys aren't lost forever and they are actually enemies in Fireteam Raven where you do get to fight them full on. So there's a good chance that this is now canon and they'll return in the future. There are also these alien troopers, which are pretty interesting in their own right. In the first Halo game, you had the elites and the hunters. So when Halo 2 was in their development, Bungie thought that if they combined some of their features, they could make a new type of enemy. And that's likely what this alien trooper would have been. It would have been some sort of different version of the hunter, but ultimately it seems like the alien trooper was maybe also inspired by the marathon enemy race, the four, which had this fighter subclass that kind of looks similar. On the Halo 2 level, the Arbiter, there was originally supposed to be these space jellyfish that would be floating outside to add some level of ambiance to the level and make it feel more alive. But honestly, the prototype files that are found in the Halo 2 game are kind of goofy, but still, it is really interesting. They were legit called Space Blimp in some files. Now, there was also supposed to be this special purpose sniper, and apparently at one point during Halo 2's development, there was this other enemy class besides the Jackal snipers that would have been specifically made for the point of sniping, which while it doesn't give us a lot of information, could maybe have some comparisons drawn to maybe the skirmishers being a separate class of things in the Covenant similar to like a jackal, but they kind of look very thin and just with the little bit of concept art that we do see, sometimes they're depicted with two legs and sometimes just one leg. So you can think about that 
however you feel like thinking about it. Now there was also supposedly supposed to be some shielded flood carriers as well, and it's probably one of the wackier things from Halo 2 because it's like the popcorn flood, but they just have this jackal shield glued to the front of it. And in concept, this might be cool and realistic, but you think about actually fighting the flood itself, having a jackal shield blocking something like a popcorn flood could be a little bit annoying. And also in theory, they should be able to just hold the shields as well. But something about this design just comes off kind of goofy. And then there also were supposed to be maybe some pulse beam sentinels. And while Halo 2 sentinels already use the sentinel beam, there were plans for a variant that would use a pulse beam instead, which is kind of the same type of weapon that those big enforcer things use. Now moving on to Halo 3, it seems like development was a lot more structured in plans for classes and what they ended up actually using and or not using, or at the very least, some of the concepts that didn't make it into Halo 3 are still unknown to this day. But there are a few things that are kind of interesting. For instance, there was this Flood Infector form, which almost looks like a different version of those good old popcorn looking Flood. And these guys had three legs and would generate back just after a few seconds of being destroyed. They could even shoot out the spores, which then attach themselves to nearby Marines and turn them into the Flood. There was something that was supposedly going to be called the Flood Stealth form, which just sounds absolutely terrifying. It also kind of looks terrifying. And this thing was supposed to walk around on four tentacles, giving it the illusion that it was almost floating above the ground. But other than just some concept art, there's really not too much known about it or why it would have been somewhat stealthy. Maybe it would have invisibility with it. That would be even scarier. And then for a while, there was even plans for a possible flood transport type vehicle class that would be used to bring the flood into a location for a firefight. In previous games and even in Halo 3, the flood kind of just appear and drop in, but there were originally plans to have some sort of transportation system that would carry up to six flood combat forms into battle. Apparently this thing would also pick up corpses and turn them into flood eggs and then plant them somewhere else, which is scary. And while Halo 3 ODST wouldn't have any cut species necessarily, just mostly working off of the Halo 3 set and sandbox, there was a cut class in Halo Wars besides the ones we talked about from Combat Evolved's era called a Chafka, which was supposed to be this big Yeti-like creature with these massive tusks, which would be found in snowy areas. And this did make an appearance in the book Hunters of the Dark, which is the same book that also reintroduced that blind wolf from Combat Evolved we talked about earlier. Going into Halo Reach, there's a few interesting and notable things like the Guta, for instance, which was supposed to have a much bigger involvement in the Halo Reach campaign, though it ended up getting trimmed down because there were some issues with the AI and programming, so they really limited the amount of encounters you face off with the Gutas in. Now, there's been a lot of talk floating around and rumors that these were supposedly supposed to be a part of Combat Evolved. We don't know of any evidence strictly pointing that out, so we don't know necessarily unless people are getting it mistaken with the Thorn Beast, but still, the Guta just kind of look interesting, and it is cool that they at least did make their way into the game somehow. Also, there's two more small creatures in Halo Reach that were cut, and since we probably don't have another chance to actually get to mention them, we just want to do a quick rest in peace for the Reach Porcupine and that Reach Squirrel that never fully made their way into the game. Moving into the 343 era of Halo games, there were some leftovers of deleted classes throughout their games as well. Like with Halo 4, there was plans to have a bugger sniper class, but the buggers all together ended up just getting cut out of the game. And in Halo 5, there was plans for the Forerunner Cavalier. Now we already know of the Warden Eternal, but earlier in development, it is likely that this would have been its own Forerunner class class known as the Cavalier. It seemed more it would have this shell of armor that would fill up with energy, kind of like the Warden. It did have the staff thing though, which is kind of cool and it would have had some sort of ability to send out shockwaves by ramming into the ground, so that would have been kind of neat. And in one of the earlier forms of the Forerunner Soldier, there actually was this class called a Forerunner Pack Master, and it was this cut enemy class that would supposedly lead a group of crawlers, and it kind of looked like this weird mix of a bugger and crawler in its own right, but it seemed like it was cut very early on and kind of repurposed maybe into the Promethean Soldier. And while we don't know too much about Halo Wars 2 itself, apparently there are plans for a grunt hero, which could have been cool, it would have been like an armored version of a grunt, and it kind of makes the grunts look a little more badass. But outside of that, that's kind of all we know when it comes to Halo Wars 2. I don't know, we have a lot of fun looking through the Halo franchise and seeing the things that almost made their way into a game, but didn't quite make their way into the actual game. So if any of these were really interesting, or any of these you're like, man, why can't we have that in Halo? And you're sad about it, 
and let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more videos like this. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.